Okay, so I'm going to introduce the second practice, the second approach uh, that we're going to be using on this retreat. There's ba- basically two approaches. Now this may seem like quite a lot already. <clears throat> it's already introducing something else. But after this, that's pretty much it. Pretty much for this retreat. So it will seem like a lot, but just... Um, I want to offer you possibilities, and I actually I really want you to understand this. So we have this focusing and tuning into impermanence that we were practicing, and that will stay, we'll keep doing that, so that remains an option for you to play with. But adding another option. So some of you will be familiar with a teaching of the Buddhas called the Four Foundations of Mindfulness. It's quite well known in this kind of tradition. Four foundations of mindfulness. Another translation is that the word is patana, sati patana. Another translation is four stations of mindfulness or four stations of awareness. And sometimes it's quite um, helpful, I think, to use that second translation as station. In other words, we station the awareness in a certain, not geographic, not spatial location, but a certain strata of our experience. I'll explain what I mean. So we're stationing the awareness with the body, or we're stationing the awareness with the emotions. Or what I'm talking about today, what I want to talk about today, is stationing the awareness with what's called Vedana. So that means it's an aspect, it's a, a level of experience that we keep tuning into. So this word Vedana is V-E-D-A-N-A. It's a Pali word, which is the language that the Buddhist teachings were recorded in. Vedana. It's actually the second foundation of mindfulness that the Buddha talked about. And it usually gets translated as something like feeling or feeling tone. But this is a little bit misleading uh, because in English, usually when we say feeling, we mean emotion. What are you feeling? How are you feeling? I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling happy. Vedana is something actually more subtle than that, much simpler in a way and more basic. So it doesn't mean emotion. It's rather the felt sense of any experience being felt as pleasant or unpleasant or kind of in between pleasant and unpleasant. Uh, Sometimes what's called neutral, but you could say just kind of in between somewhere, or neither pleasant nor unpleasant. So very, very simple. Very, very simple. Now, all moments of our experience, absolutely all moments of our experience, uh, have a Vedana tone to them. They are either felt as pleasant or unpleasant or in between. All the moments. Every moment of actually both waking and sleeping consciousness. So sometimes this is very clear. We're walking barefoot or without shoes and we stub our toe. Very clearly unpleasant. Interesting, if uh, we're not doing it much, we're not doing it at all on this retreat, but if you're familiar with watching the breath uh, as a meditation, sometimes the breath can feel very lovely, feels very pleasant coming into the body, feels very smooth or silky or or subtle, uh, very open. Other times the breath feels unpleasant. And a lot of the time, breath just feels like it's just coming in and out. It's neither here nor there. Taste. So when we put something delicious in the mouth, and there's a sort of explosion of pleasant sensation in the mouth. Or we put something in, there's not much there at all. Or unpleasant. Um, sound as well. Sometimes there are, there are lovely sounds. Uh, if I had a, a chalkboard here, a blackboard and long nails, and I scrape down the blackboard. For a lot of people, it's unpleasant. Uh, the birds you get very beautiful songbirds sometimes, or just beautiful, um, delicate notes of chirping. Other times, these rooks, they're quite quiet at the moment, but they go absolutely bananas, arguing with each other in the trees all day long. <laughs> uh, can sound to some people unpleasant. When we go outside, the wind, the breeze on the face, on the body, 
coolness of that. It's quite a cool day today. Sometimes might be felt as pleasant, other times might be felt as unpleasant. A hot shower on a cold day usually felt as pleasant, but too hot, unpleasant. Um, here, saving water, we don't always flush the toilets. And you go in if it's been, you know, collecting for a while. It doesn't smell that nice, it smells unpleasant. We're going to be doing walking meditation. Sometimes just how does the walking feel? Can feel pleasant or unpleasant in the whole body or in the foot? But every aspect of our experience, a thought, a thought of um, I'm a failure or you're an idiot or I'm an idiot, this is unpleasant thought. It doesn't feel nice. It doesn't reverberate with pleasantness. Um, but a thought of loving kindness will reverberate with pleasantness. It's a pleasant uh, feeling to that thought. Um, any emotion we have, grief, sadness, peace, joy, uh, depression, boredom, you name it, any emotion also has a Vedana tone to it. So some emotions are pleasant to feel and some are unpleasant. Now, so every moment of our experience, whatever sense realm or inner or outer experience, has this pleasant, unpleasant or in between. Now, one level, that is very reductionist. It's like just dividing life up into these three categories. When I first heard that 20-odd years ago, uh, I was furious. I, w- I thought, this is absolutely cold and clinical and horribly reductionistic. And I stopped practicing for four years. That's a little extreme reaction, but it's understandable that someone might have that reaction. Most people... I think hearing this, the, the, the sense is, well, okay, kind of, so what? What's the big deal about that? All right. And we actually teach this, when we teach insight meditation retreats, we tend to teach this um, every time we go through like a week retreat. It's actually very rare that someone picks it up as a meditation and stations the awareness, tunes the awareness in to this level of experience Ongoing, keep com- keep coming back to that. Keep coming back. Most people hear it, maybe understand it, maybe not understand it, and then just kind of a little bit forget it. That seems to be quite normal. It's a teaching that's very easily overlooked and very easily not given much attention to. And you know, it's understandable when we hear it because it's, it sounds like, well, so what? What's the big deal there? A lot of times on retreat, and a lot of times in our life. We are actually, the consciousness is actually preoccupied. It's caught up in something. Something has become a big deal. Um, It could be something in the mind or the heart, something emotionally that we're caught up in, uh, a feeling, an emotion. shouldn't use that word feeling because it will get confusing. Uh, An emotion. Could be something in the body that's going on that we're mm, caught up in. Could be that we're preoccupied and caught up in a self-view, how much spinning we have as human beings in terms of, oh, I'm, I'm terrible, I'm a failure, I can't do it. I, 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 me, 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 me. And it just goes round and round on that level, on that level. Or, of course, we get preoccupied with a situation. The situation, say, what should I do here? This, that, oh, this terrible thing happening. All of this is very understandable, not to judge that at all. It's very, very much, you could say, part of what consciousness does and part of the human condition. But, but, at that point, at that stage, when we're already preoccupied, we have already reacted to something much simpler. And that's part of that something much simpler is this Vedana. We've already reacted to it, and we've already complicated it. So by the time we're caught up in an emotion, preoccupied with a situation, with a self-view, and harassing ourselves and judging ourselves, we've already complicated something. We've already reacted and complicated something. Almost always without realizing it. Without realizing it. And we've sort of snowballed something very simple. We've spun off some basic unpleasantness or basic pleasantness and it's snowballed and we've created something with it we've spun uh, spun something with it 
We've built something with it. So an emotional state is actually something that's built, it's gathered, it's compounded from simpler elements. And we, we do that. We do that. We, it can feel to us like, no, I'm just here and my emotions are just coming and going. And to a certain extent that's true. But there's a level that we build, we compound our emotional life. Now, this is a practice, and what I really want to encourage is a practice. So there's a practice here with Vedna. Can we keep tuning in, keep attending, tuning in the attention to this simpler, more basic level of experience, just over and over again? Uh, It's a much simpler level. And what that does, first of all, it simplifies. It simplifies. We get so used to complexity and the whirlwind of complexity, it's actually just simplifying. A peace comes with just that simplifying. And there's something here to understand that's absolutely crucial for us as human beings to understand. Out of that understanding, out of the simplicity and out of the peace, comes freedom, comes equanimity. Now, again, I touched on this last night, but it's absolutely not to say that the other levels of our experience, the levels of the complexity of a situation we find ourselves in, or the levels of emotionality, it's not saying that they're not important. Okay? They are important, and we, we need as human beings to be able to work and address and um, meet things on that level. But just what would it be as a practice sometimes to develop the ability to sometimes tune into much, something much simpler? So this really is a practice, and I want to emphasize that word practice, that we practice our sensitivity at that level. So sometimes, like I say, you stub your toe, it's very clearly unpleasant. A lot of experience is not that clearly uh, at one extreme or the other. So right now, my right, well, both feet are touching the floor, and if I just tune in to the, the feeling tone at the soles of the feet, it's actually just subtly pleasant just subtly pleasant sometimes for, for many people it actually takes a little time hanging out at this level of experience to actually develop the sensitivity really really worth it but that's the first kind of stage of this is really just practicing a sensitivity now the Buddha adds something very important he says see the Vedana as Vedana you have to see the Vedana in the Vedana or see the Vedana as the Vedana So what tends to happen is we can be sitting in meditation or in our day and we feel, I don't know, a constriction in the heart area. And it's unpleasant. And then how quickly we interpret that block, that constriction. Ah, I haven't sorted out my relationship with my mother. I haven't, whatever it is. Some uh, self-view comes in. You understand? And it's, it's added something on the top of it. Or um, because there's an unpleasant feeling, well, I'm a failure as a meditator, or I'm no good at this, I should just go home. Or there's something unpleasant or whatever, uh, and we paint a picture of life. Well, <coughs> life is pretty grim. Very quickly the mind spins off the basic level and says something, wants to make conclusions about a much more general, abstract level. Or if it's pleasant, oh, here I am almost enlightened, or whatever. Or, if it's pleasant, I need to have more. I need to have more of this. I need to have more. Or if it's unpleasant, I need to get away from this. I need to leave. I need to get out. So this is just normal. And the Buddha says, can we see the feeling in the feeling, the Vedana in the Vedana. Now, all consciousnesses, human or otherwise, have a typical reaction to this Vedana. And it's important that we become aware of that. So there's absolutely no judgment here. There's no judgment here. This is just what happens with consciousness. When there is a pleasant feeling, we want to keep it. We want more of it. We want to extend it in time. It's what we call craving. We crave more of it. 
That's just very normal. But we can be aware of that. When there's unpleasant Vedana, we want to get rid of it. We want to reject it. We want to destroy it, wipe it out. There's aversion. When there's neutral feeling, it's interesting, because it's not so charged, it doesn't seem to have so much in it for me, for the self, and oftentimes we just get bored. Just get, there's nothing, we just kind of, something in the mind just turns off and gets disinterested. So these are our typical uh, reactions to Vedana. Typical reaction of consciousness. So there's no judgment in that at all. It's just a very normal part of, of the human condition. Sometimes that reaction will be very um, obvious. The mind is screaming, stop, get out, this is horrible, I, I want it enough. Other times it's much, much more subtle. There's just a, a slight retraction or pulling away or, or rejection of something. It's much more subtly energetic. Is it possible to stay, to keep tuned in to this Vedana level of experience and just be aware of the reaction. So it's really important to point out, we're not trying to get rid of these Vedana. You actually, well, uh, for, for the most part right now, you can't get rid of them. Uh, they're part of life. They're part of actually the flow of experience, changing all the time. But we want to see two things. The first is that change. So we've touched on this already. We want to tune in to the fact of their impermanence, their arising, passing. If you sit in meditation, if you have a pain in, your, in the back or the knee or whatever, you just tune in there, you see unpleasant, unpleasant. It, it flickers in and out of the experience and then nothing, and then unpleasant. Changing, changing all the time. When we see change, the mind begins to let go, it realizes there's nothing to grasp here. So there's a lot here, but the the piece I really want to emphasize this morning is being aware of the reaction to Vedana. Being aware of this reaction, this pulling towards ourselves uh, what's pleasant, what we call craving, pushing away from ourselves what's unpleasant, even if it's just subtly energetic. Really being aware of that. And can we learn? Can we learn to relax those reactions? To be aware of them and learn to re- relax those reactions. This is a skill, an art that we can develop as meditators. What we begin to notice, if we can do this, is that as we relax the reaction suffering begins to drain from experience. So here's something unpleasant, and we're suffering because of that unpleasantness. But as I learn to relax my relationship to it, the suffering tends to drain from the experience. You can also relax some of the fraughtness with craving, and the suffering drains we begin to see that the Vedana itself, the pleasantness or the unpleasantness, is actually not a problem. That's not the problem in our life. For the most part, we suffer because of our relationship, because of our reaction of being pushed and pulled, of pushing and pulling. So there's a lot here to play with, but what I really want to do is, that the day is... Um, focused on these two meditations, the impermanence we've already introduced, and this playing with this Vedna, and really just tuning into that. So we have these two approaches, the impermanence and this kind of allowing the Vedna. So you really just, if it's unpleasant or pleasant, it's just allowing it to be there, allowing it to be whatever it needs to be, and seeing if it's possible to relax the relationship, to relax the reaction. Sometimes we relax our relationship just by relaxing the body. You'll notice if something's um, unpleasant, the rest of the body tenses up a little bit. If it's an unpleasant emotion, an unpleasant body sensation, whatever it is, the rest of the body tenses up. Sometimes just relaxing the rest of the body actually relaxes the relationship with the Vedana. And sometimes one just becomes aware that there's pushing and pulling going on, and that relaxes it. And sometimes just one finds other ways to relax it.
Okay. So that may be a lot of information. I say we've got two practices now to play with. Um, later on this morning, and in fact a couple of times peppered through the retreat, there will be an opportunity to ask questions and have some feedback and uh, share a little bit how it's going. Um, but I, I really encourage you to play with it and see, um, make, make it your own. Make this practice your own. And um, do ask questions if, if it's not clear. Okay, so let's uh, do a sitting meditation now. <clears throat> 